Welcome into the Alabama Football Report by Chat Sports. It's your boy Tom Downey here once again. What we're doing today is a little bit different than stuff we've done in the past. It's a positional breakdown. We'll run through the quarterback room for the Crimson Tide. Who's going to start the backups, the scholarship players right now? If this is something you want more of in the future, then like the video. Eh, it's a dead period in the year. We're trying out different things, and we want you to help inform us of what we should be doing. So if you want more of these for running back, wide receiver, offense, defense, all that stuff, like today's video right now. Like I mentioned, it's a quarterback positional preview today for the Crimson Tide, which is, you know, it's the obvious spot to start, right? It's quarterback. And it's also the single biggest question mark right now, I believe, for this Alabama football team in 2023 under Nick Saban. We begin with the loss, right? Bryce Young, the latest in a recent long line of really freaking good quarterbacks at Alabama. Mac Jones, Tua Tungavailoa, Bryce Young, the Heisman Trophy winner, who, I'll be honest, I know the numbers weren't as good, etc. I thought the play from Bryce Young in 2022, well, the numbers don't back it up, was better than what we saw in 2021 because the supporting cast was not nearly as good, which is a conversation for a different day on a different traditional breakdown. But Alabama, I would say almost 100% guaranteed, will not have the same level of quarterback play this year. The, the level of talent is different. The type of quarterback they have is different. You know, Bryce Young was making in-structure plays in 2021 and constant magic in 2023, or in 2022. This year, yeah, we'll break down all five of these guys. Tyler Buckner, Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, Eli Holstein, and Dylan Lonergan as well. All five are on scholarship for Alabama, and five scholarship QBs, is quite a bit for the Crimson Tide in terms of historical carrying from that perspective. We're going to go player by player here. You saw the depth chart, how I ranked them as QB 1, 2, 3. That battle's not over yet. But I want you guys to be honest with this next question. What is your confidence level in the Alabama quarterback room? One on the low end, 10 on the high end. If the ad break comes here on the YouTube side of things, take advantage of it. Head down there. One on the low end, 10 on the high end. Go vote at the pinned comments of today's video. Let's go player by player. Beginning with a guy that I think ends up starting for Alabama. As I give away the whole show early, I guess. Tyler Buckner. Buckner transferred from Notre Dame. Sam Hartman was clearly going to start. That was never really in doubt. But Hartman's going to be there for one year at Notre Dame. Buckner could have waited a year and then taken over the starting job. I do not believe Buckner transferred with the intent of saying, I'll just be a backup, it's fine. He transferred to Alabama to reunite with Tommy Reese, to reunite with his old college OC, and to give himself a realistic shot of starting. It was not going to happen this year at Notre Dame. He goes to Alabama, not to be, I'll be the veteran backup, no. He wants to be the guy for the Crimson Tide. Problem is, well, he's not a locked and loaded starter, I don't believe. The numbers we've seen at Notre Dame were, up and down at best. There is dual threat. There is mobility, which I think will be a big part of this Alabama offense this upcoming season. But a eh, sub 7% completion guy. He was actually decent against Ohio State last year. Was hurt for a good portion of the year. Played really well against South Carolina and killed the Fighting Irish against Marshall. Hey, if he, he helped cost them that game, a game they never, ever should have lost. I'll also make notes for all the recruiting profiles. It's worth mentioning even though, eh, you know, some guys are overhyped, some guys are underhyped. Uh, Buckner, when he committed to Notre Dame, was a four-star recruit. He was number 71 overall, the number 11 quarterback, number five out of California, but has not lived up to that hype quite yet. The favorite entering spring, because, of course, Buckner transferred in after spring practice, was Jalen Milrow. And you'll see some similar numbers there. Again, the constant theme is sub-60% completion percentage. Uh, I, I will never forget, for as long as I live, uh, Bryce Young gets hurt. I, I know, kind of a weird thing to start with. But uh, Bryce Young gets hurt uh, in th th this past year. Jalen Milrow comes in. They cut to the CBS Southern Reporter and says, Bill O'Brien says, says he can't throw. He has to run the football. Wait, what? I, I don't know if Bill O'Brien didn't realize he was being interviewed or that was going to be quoted or whatever. It was a weird thing to say because he can throw a little bit. But Milrow's dual threat is very valuable. And, you know, the spring game isn't exactly built to be a running event. There was a little bit of, of scrambling for Jalen Milrow. Took a bunch of sacks, but they blew it dead pretty early. So he maybe could have avoided more of them if it was a, a real football game. But it is not an accident that after the spring game, after Ty Simpson, we'll get to here in a little bit, and Jalen Milrow struggled to protect the football, 
the Nick Saban, Tommy Reese, go get a new quarterback in Tyler Buckner. That is not an accident. Milrow, by the way, not that dissimilar of a recruiting profile to that of Tyler Buckner. Four-star, top 85, uh, number 14 from Texas, top 15 quarterback. Milrow's a great athlete. I think it's Milrow Buckner as the likely battle with, I think, Buckner winning, but you can still see some of Milrow this year. Now, we will have more updates for you on Alabama football from recruiting to fall camp once that gets going. So make sure you are subscribed. Free videos every single day, or at least throughout the weeks, I, a week, I should say, right here on our Alabama football. I want to become an everyday channel. We need your help. Need more subscribers. Hit that sub button right now. Ty Simpson is the other big name on this list. He barely played it all in 2022. Four of five for 35 yards. If you can glean enough information off of five attempts to determine whether or not somebody is a obvious franchise guy or not, you should be an NFL scout and GM because you're going to make a lot of money. It's not, it's not, it's not how football works. And in the spring game, my issue is I, just, I don't know if Ty Simpson's ready. Now He's a redshirt freshman. He was 12 of 26. He added some nice rushing yards, but 155 passing yards, just one, uh, no touchdowns, one interception there. Small sample size, but inconsistent. Of the scholarship quarterbacks, not that it would be a non-scholarship rated higher, but Ty Simpson is the most highly touted recruit. He's a five-star out of Tennessee. Beat, beat the Vols for him. Number 26 overall. I, I would wonder if Simpson just, just, he maybe just needs more time. These, these are, after all, still kids. These are not grown adults, especially not some redshirt freshmen. Like, think back to, to when you were that age, when you were entering your second year of college. Like, he just needs some more time at, at various points. So I'm not sure Simpson is ready. But he's got an entire fall camp to prove me and potentially Alabama staff wrong. Who do you think ends up being the starter for Alabama this year? B for Tyler Buckner, M for Jalen Milrow, or S for Ty Simpson? Go ahead and sound off with your predictions for me in the comment section. We'll wrap up with the two more overlooked guys. And I'll blame myself if they end up starting, and I didn't give them enough credit there. The freshmen that have come in this year, Eli Holstein, first up, four-star recruit, number 89 overall, number five from Louisiana. He was the number one ranked quarterback in this year's class that Alabama signed. Again, he's a true freshman, screams red shirt, if not maybe active for four games as you know the, the minimum rules there, but red shirt candidate there. Same with Dylan Lonergan, the other freshman recruit that Alabama brought in this year. He was 159 overall, 13th quarterback, four star. So there's five scholarship quarterbacks then on this Bama uh, quarterback room, in the quarterback room, on the quarterback depth chart. Buckner, Milrow, Simpson, Eli Holstein, and Dylan Lonergan. I'd say Buckner, Milrow, Simpson are the three heavy favorites from that perspective. And then the other two, the, the, the new guys, the new freshmen, end up redshirting there. I think Simpson needs some more time. And there is still untapped ability because, yeah, you know, he's only a second-year guy. Buckner and Milrow fit the same dual-threat ability kind of. And Simpson can run, too. Don't, don't get me wrong there. Uh, but with the quarterback room in place... It's going to be a run-heavy scheme this year for Alabama. If you want more positional breakdowns, talk more about the running, the running back room, for example, then show us. Like today's video if you haven't already, if you want more positional breakdowns for Alabama in 2023.